In this section, we'll review the Generation 1 hub bearing. Generation 1 cartridge style wheel bearings can be either a tapered or ball design. They are double row angular contact bearings, typically with a split inner ring. The split inner ring means each half of the bearing can rotate independently of each other if rotated by hand. These bearings are typically greased or sealed for life. Some Generation 1 wheel bearings may also include a wheel speed sensor magnetic impulse ring built into the seal on one side of the bearing. These types of wheel bearings can only be installed in one direction. The encoder ring must be placed next to the wheel speed sensor or the ABS, traction control or stability control system will not function. Generation 1 hub bearings can be found in driven front and rear wheels and also in integral drum designs on the non-driven wheels of smaller cars. In this section, we will only cover a Generation 1 hub bearing for a typical front wheel drive application. The principles are basically the same for all applications of Generation 1 cartridge style wheel bearings. Tip. Generation 1 hub bearings are precision engineered components and are susceptible to damage by using an air gun. Do not use an impact wrench when installing these units. Only use the correct axle torque specifications and manufacturer's recommended installation procedure. We'll start by looking at the inspection and diagnosis procedures associated with Generation 1 hub bearings. Begin by following the vehicle manufacturer's recommended procedure to remove the tire and wheel. Remove the brake rotor and caliper or brake drum and then rotate the hub. Any roughness or resistance to rolling is an indication of contaminant intrusion or a failed bearing. If these conditions are present, the bearing requires replacement. Do not attempt to disassemble the bearing for repair. It is not repairable. Tip. On vehicles equipped with disc brakes, remove and hang the caliper out of the way using a wire hanger. Do not support the caliper by letting it hang by the brake hose. On vehicles equipped with wheel speed sensors, disconnect the sensor and hang the sensor wire out of the way using a wire hanger. Next, inspect the bearing seals for damage or grease loss. If the seal is damaged or if there is any grease leakage, the bearing requires replacement. Then, check the bearing end play using a dial indicator. Mount the dial indicator base on the frame. With the dial plunger or pointer against the flange face, set the indicator gauge at zero. Grasp the hub flange at the 3 o'clock and 9 o'clock positions. With equal pressure on both hands, push straight in and read the dial indicator. Then, with equal pressure on both hands, pull out and read the dial indicator again. The bearing end play is equal to the total dial indicator movement. End play should not exceed three thousandths to five thousandths of an inch. Also, inspect the hub flange for excessive runout. Excessive runout or a bent wheel flange can lead to brake rotor or other component problems in the suspension system. Tip. If a bent hub flange is reused, it will cause premature failure of the bearing. Wheel end kits are available for many applications and include a new hub flange, bearing, and other components where required. Finally, check the runout by using a dial indicator. Mount the dial indicator base in a non-movable location, such as the frame. With a dial indicator plunger or pointer against the hub flange face, set the indicator gauge at zero. Rotate the hub and read the dial indicator. Runout should not exceed two thousandths of an inch. Now we will review hub flange and bearing removal for Generation 1 hub bearings. The hub flange is pressed or bolted to the wheel knuckle assembly. In some cases, the removal and installation of the wheel bearing and hub flange from the wheel knuckle can only be done with the knuckle removed from the vehicle. In this section, we will cover an example of a front wheel drive application where the steering knuckle assembly is removed from the vehicle. Start by removing the steering knuckle assembly from the vehicle using the manufacturer's recommended procedure. Tip: Do not use a hammer to separate an outboard CV joint from the hub. Damage to the threads and internal CV joint components can result. Never use a hammer on the hub or bearing. This could bend the hub flange or cause internal bearing damage. Next, place the knuckle assembly in a press so the hub flange can be removed. 
In many cases, using a bearing splitter will make the process easier. Tip. Avoid supporting the knuckle on steering arms, strut flanges, or brake caliper tabs, as in some cases these parts could easily get damaged in the process. Position the appropriate remover installer tool on the small end of the hub flange. Using the press, remove the hub flange from the knuckle assembly. Then, remove the wheel bearing C-clip retainer if applicable and position the appropriate remover installer tool on the outer bearing race. Press and remove the bearing from the knuckle assembly. In some cases, the inner bearing race will come out of the bearing with the hub flange as it is pressed out of the knuckle assembly. If that happens, remove it by positioning a bearing splitter between the hub flange and the bearing race. Place the hub flange, bearing race, and splitter in a press. Position the appropriate remover installer tool on the small end of the hub flange and press the hub flange off of the bearing race. Now let's review bearing installation for Generation 1 hub bearings. Before assembly, clean the knuckle of any loose rust and debris. Inspect and clean the knuckle bore with a clean, dry shop towel or rag. Any burrs, nicks, or scratches should be smoothed out with an emery cloth before installing the new bearing. Tip. Make sure to closely inspect the knuckle bore. If it is distorted, it will cause the outer race to take the shape of the damaged bore. If it is enlarged, it could allow the outer race of the bearing to rotate in the knuckle. Either condition will cause a bearing to fail prematurely. Place the knuckle in a press, making sure to fully support it so it won't move. Lightly coat the outer surface of the new wheel bearing and the knuckle bore with wheel bearing grease. Next, place the new wheel bearing into the bore of the knuckle, making sure the bearing is placed squarely in the bore. Position the appropriate remover installer tool on the outer race of the bearing, and then press the wheel bearing into the knuckle until it seats squarely against the shoulder of the knuckle bore. If required, install the bearing C-clip retainer. Tip. Many Generation 1 hub bearings are held in place with a bearing retainer, which is often called a C-clip. If these are bent or damaged, they can cause setting problems for the bearing. It is a best practice to always use a new C-clip. Now, turn the knuckle over and firmly support the inner race of the wheel bearing. Inspect the hub flange to be sure there isn't a wear groove where the bearing rides. If a wear groove is present, replace the hub flange with a new one. Next, place the hub flange in the wheel bearing, making sure it is square with the bearing inner race. Then, position the appropriate remover installer tool on the center of the hub flange, and then press the hub flange into the wheel bearing until it is fully bottomed in the bearing. Remove the knuckle assembly from the press and verify that the hub flange turns smoothly without binding. Tip. While pressing the bearing into the knuckle or pressing the hub flange into the wheel bearing, force must only be applied to the appropriate bearing race as described above. The inner race must not move in relation to the outer race. The application of force to the wrong part of the bearing will ruin it by severely damaging the raceways and balls or rollers. The last topic we'll cover for Generation 1 hub bearings is reassembly and installation. Install the steering knuckle assembly to the vehicle using the manufacturer's recommended procedure. Tip: Some hubs come with a new retaining nut in the box. This is typically when a one-time use self-staking nut secures the hub. In these applications, a new nut must always be used when installing a hub. Reuse of the old nut could potentially cause the nut to loosen during vehicle operation. Next, install the brake rotor and caliper or brake drum and all remaining components per the vehicle manufacturer's recommended procedure. Follow the vehicle manufacturer's recommended procedure to replace the tire and wheel. Finally, torque the hub nut according to the manufacturer's recommended procedure. Important, do not use an impact wrench to set the torque of the hub retaining nut. Only use a torque wrench. Tip. The best practice is to have the vehicle on the ground to perform the final torquing to OEM specifications. This assures the proper mating of the split inner rings of the bearing needed to achieve the proper internal clearance. And, always check and adjust the alignment as necessary after this service. Now, let's review some general information about Generation 1 hub bearings to close out this section. 
The following general service information should be considered. Special tools are required. Most are sealed for life, generally 100,000 miles. Generation 1 hub bearings should never be reused. Specific vehicle hub retaining nut torque required. Do not use an impact wrench to loosen or tighten the hub retaining nut. Now let's review some common causes of failure. Lack of support on the inner bearing race during hub flange installation. Hammer is used to install the hub flange or bearing. Reuse of a bent hub flange. Improper hub retaining nut torque. Use of low quality or value grade parts.